All right, Mercury conjunct K2 or Rahu. What does it mean? What's going to happen? Okay, so first off, this is actually one of the least, uh, one of the least really harmful or dramatic conjunctions. As we've talked about so far, uh, when the planets are conjunct one of the lunar nodes, it isn't considered to be that, it's, it's considered to be a tough thing because the lunar nodes are cruel planets, they're eclipses. So that planet is getting eclipsed somehow in your chart. The lunar nodes are just these big filters, you know, they really filter everything. So I've covered every planet except Mercury, so this will be the last one. Um, remember that you do need to know the signs even more so, so I, hopefully I'll try to teach a course on that when I get a chance. But Mercury conjunct K2 is very, very interesting. Mercury is really a great way to explain Mercury is the actor. Mercury rules acting because... Mercury is the planet that represents Vishnu or the universal consciousness that becomes everything and is doing everything. And everyone's here to play a role, you know, and Mercury is kind of like that. And Mercury is the ability to, it's all the many things. Mercury just rules details. It's the number four planet. You know, you have the sun is pure spirit, the number one. Then the number two, the moon, the reflection, the ego mind. Then the number three is Mars. The conceptual uh, trine quality that creates after you have two, you have an in-between, something to view them, um, to direct energy between them two, which is Mars. Then you have four is Mercury. From four, you have a square. You have the Earth element. You have everything from there. That's why the Tao Te Ching says the one became the two, and the two became the three, and from the three became all things. F Mercury is all the things. It's the four. And so... Mercury represents, uh, so basically having Mercury with K2 means that in past lives you've done Mercury very well. So that means that you've been able, you've done many things. You've been multi-talented. That's one good way to see it. Uh, Mercury in general makes you very multi-talented. If Mercury is with Rahu, then you need to learn to be more multi-talented and learn to uh, explore more and whatnot. So this is kind of how this is going to play out. So Mercury conjunct K2, they're not, they're, they're very, very skilled and experienced in a certain thing from past lives. Um, but they are not usually as open to other stuff because of this. So the person really knows how to do certain things very well with Mercury conjunct K2, but then as a result, they're very, they're oftentimes very, very not open to the Rahu point, the opposite point that they need to develop. So with you know, Mercury, you can be very intelligent and quick to learn, like the saying mercurial, being changeable, quick, adaptable, um, but always question, but with the K2 there, it's never enough. So uh, one is always questioning more. They're always intelligent, they're always learning, but then they always need to learn more. They're always doubting. Uh, whatever they learn, they'll doubt it and need to learn again and learn more. They're always doubling back over again. Um, and re-questioning and revisiting the things, um, th that's a big tendency with Mercury conjunct K2 because one doubts Mercury and their intellect, but then they still want to rely on that a lot. So you can see how that can create certain psychological issues. This placement's still better than a lot of other placements of planets conjunct nodes, though, because it can help the person do a lot of research and study and find things that help get them out of their K2 castle eventually and get them into the jungle of Rahu, the unknown world as we like to call it, <clears throat> which you have to eventually explore. Like Jung says, the cave which you least, w that you're most afraid to enter has the treasure which you seek. Um, so one other cool thing about Mercury conjunct K2 is they can see things from a variety of different angles, which can be really good. So if you need someone like that, these are good people to to call upon. And this is again why they can make a great actor, because this is someone who can pull up and, you know, go research their own life and pull up and call upon a certain feeling or emotion at will, almost robotic like, almost like, you know, because that's more Mercury side. Um, so they can sort of play the role they're asked without uh, as much attachment to their personality or with more detachment. So that's actually like the ideal placement for an, an actor. You see, Mercury, as my teacher explains it very well, he's like, 
you know, Mer Mercury is, is, is sort of impartial. He's not like the moon. His enemy is the moon, which gets too emotional and too subjective. Mercury, you know, the moon sees a scarred face and it's like, oh man, that's an ugly face. That's gnarly. Ugh. And um, Mercury sees that face and he's like, oh, I, you know, he's an agent for an acting company. And he's like, oh, that's a scarred face. Well, next time I need to cast someone for a role of a pirate or of a really scarred face, I'll call that guy up. So that's kind of the idea of Mercury. He just, he can use something that's normally bad, a really good Mercury can just find the right way to use that and utilize that, which is why Mercury represents skills and tools and speech, because speech and communication language is just a skill to help you get what you want out of this world. So gr pretty good at all those things, as long as K2's Lord is in good dignity and whatnot. So they're in another way, they're capable of getting, they're really good at doing the thing that gets the right result, in a sense. Um, and they know what part of their personality to show to people, to bring out, to, to act. They can almost be a little two-faced in this way, a little bit of like a politician in this regard, if they need to. Um, but they can feel very, very dissatisfied with that intellect and with that side of Mercury side of life unless they can really explore Rahu. So um, what's, uh, you know, here's some, Bill Murray is an example of this. Uh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's an incredibly good actor. You know what I mean? Um, he's not famous just because he's like a good looking dude. He's got this ability to pull, to withdraw, to pull out all kinds of experiences and emotions. Um, Patrick Swayze, uh, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is a guy who's done a lot of different things, you know, and he's worn a lot of different hats and he's got a lot of range. Um, uh, Sigourney Weaver, an amazing actress. Uh, Angelina Jolie. These are both really good examples of this. Um, Bette Midler. Um, Naomi Watts is another actress that came up in my database that I would say she's like the most amazing though. Um, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, the guy who played Luke Skywalker, he's actually an incredibly gifted, trained actor. Um, he does a lot of voice acting now. Um, Edward Norton is pretty much like one of the best actors of all time. He doesn't have a good personality, so he doesn't get a lot of roles, but he's considered to be one of the best actors of all time. So those are just some examples. Um, yeah, so now we will move on to... Um, Wait, actually, let me make sure there's a few more things I wanted to cover. Yeah, these people can be very convinced that they've explored all the possibilities and that they know the right approach, but they don't. And they're, uh, they know they can ex never explore everything, you know what I mean? So then they are doubting it, but then they still think that they have it. So there's this weird game that can be played like with that. It's hard to describe, but maybe you guys know what I'm talking about if you know someone who has it or, or if you have it. Uh, Mercury is androgynous, he, or what we call non-binary in popular speak. He was, in the old days, we, he was called a neuter planet. Um, these, so he's not a polarity. He's not into being male or female. He's in between. He's non-binary. So these natives are like that. They always have like a, it's really, really, really fascinating how much you will know. You guys tell me if this is true or not. Um, people with Mercury conjunct K2 will have a very non-binary quality to them, or in this modern day world, they might be transgender or or somewhere on the spectrum or LGBT uh, somewhere in that spectrum, or they will be someone who just has a very, like if they're a man, they'll have a very like non-viral kind of vibe to them, or if a woman, just it, not dramatically as masculine or feminine defined qualities to them. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that either. Um, I mean, I have Mercury on my ascendant. I'm not like a dramatically masculine guy. I have a lot of strong feminine qualities too. Um, and, you know, you'll actually notice that with a lot of saints and siddhas have, uh, even Yogananda really kind of had a very androgynous quality to his face, if you ask me. Um, it's almost as if they've transcended male and female um, polarities. Now, if Mercury is with uh, K2... They're definitely, like, if it's more afflicted, they are not necessarily really good at the thing they're talking about. They think, they, they aren't really good at that thing, but they think they're really good at it. And that makes it even worse, and they have a lot to prove. Um, 
but if they are, if it is a strong mercury, then they do, then they are really good at that thing. Um, just to be clear. Okay, now mercury conjunct Rahu is about learning to be more like this. So you have to learn to explore the possibilities more. Um, you know, be more experimental. Try to be, uh, you know, like, just try different things, you know? Be like the possum that plays dead, you know? Uh, or, you know, how different different people, different entities, we all have something we can do. There's always an answer to the solution. or so, Every problem we have, there's always an answer to it. That's how astrology works, you know? Anyone comes up and asks me a question, I can cast a prajna or the omens or something in this moment will show me the answer to it. And Mercury is what gives us that desire to know that, and it gives us that ability to get that answer. Um, probably why I'm so into Praj and stuff like that, because like I said, I have Mercury within one degree of my ascendant. So Mercury is just an amazing planet that's just so curious. He gives you curiosity, the desire to know. I just wake up and I just want to know everything. I'm one of these people who, when you're watching a thing and something gets referenced or brought up, I have to stop and look it up if I don't know what it is. Or I ha in the old days before the uh, the phones, I had to ask everyone, "Hey, what does this mean? What does this word you're using?" It's something that's really annoying to me about. My, uh, it, I think people are getting better about it, but when I was younger, I would always notice people are so afraid to inquire. People are so afraid to ask questions. They're so afraid to um, to show that they don't know. And you'll never know if you don't show that you don't know. You'll never actually get to know. I don't know. And I know every, no one has, has had as many as good, whatever. We've not all had as many great opportunities and we all have different karma. And so sometimes in life, there are placements if your Mercury is afflicted. When you went to inquire, you did get attacked and shamed for it. So not everyone has had that opportunity. So this is why it can be really helpful to go to an astrologer and, you know, have them read your Mercury. But in general, if that's happened to you, you know, you have to heal from that and move on and go back into being able to use your Mercury and inquire and make requests and communicate and express how you freaking feel. You know, that's part of being a human. So Mercury with conjunct Rahu is just, you got to do that. You got to really, you got to send that extra text. You've got to go out of your way to uh, try to just basically live life according to the rules of the world like everyone else does and just just try to, and it will feel threatening though. That's what's really weird. It's really important for Mercury conjunct Rahu people to not try to see things so much in terms of right and wrong or good and bad. Try to see everything in the sense of like everything has its utility. Like I said about the guy with the scarred face. So um, if you want to be an actor, no matter what you are, if you just hang in there, you could end up getting a role. You know what I mean? For something because someone out there needs something you've got. And uh, with Mercury, with Rahu, it's just easy to forget that. So we have to do it more and more. So yeah, it's like these people just need to be more experimental when you have Mercury with Rahu. You just have to explore all the different possibilities. And especially with whatever house and sign that is involving in your chart. Let's say it's in the seventh house. Then you just need to try dating more. You need to try to talk to more people and just ask out more girls. You know what I mean? Um, if you only ask out one girl a month, you're definitely not going to have very good odds. If you ask out 100 girls a month, you'll have better odds. You know, it's just that sort of thing. Um, and you also really want to try to get good at something, try to develop a skill, try to get really good at something, you know, and that's one way that you'll develop your mercury. Along with going out of your way to get good at something, to get good at a skill, go out of your way to develop skills in general and to go out of your way to develop your communication abilities because that's Mercury as well. And just know that for people who have Mercury with Rahu, life tends to work out better for them when they are exploring new possibilities, when they are trying to learn, really engaging with life and not trying to act like a, like they already know everything or like there's this, this know-it-all quality or this, oh, like whenever you bring up anything, um, diet, oh, well, you can't do that because of this thing I read. Like you see research and academia and education and intellect and mercurial things can, when you have it with Ketu Rahu, they can 
really make or break the person. And you'll notice this in the world, people with K2 conjunct Mercury are a little too attached to what they've learned and what they've read. And people with Mercury conjunct Rahu are less attached, but they're less ready, they're less aware of it, and they're less ready to apply it. And so with Mercury conjunct Rahu, you've really just got to try to uh, not just research and stuff, but actually apply what you learn and do that side of it more. Um, because Mercury really is about getting your hands dirty and really applying and practicing what you learn. So with Mercury and Rahu, you got to do that more. All right, so I hope that helps share your insights. Oh, people with Mercury conjunct Rahu, uh, Mick Jagger, Johnny Cash, two big figures that have that. Well, they were experimental with music. You know what I mean? Like Mick Jagger was on the forefront of rock and roll. You know what I mean? And so that worked out for him, you see? He didn't just stop and say, oh, well, music is, you know, I went to music school and I was trained and music is just this and you follow this structure and that's that. Sorry, I can't be open to anything new. No, you see, with Mercury Rahu, he was open to something new and it made his life a lot better. Um, so, yeah, hope those are some good examples. Thanks, y'all. Take care.